So today we're going to be making this effect right over here and we're going to be using the GSAP scroll trigger and we're going to be doing it inside Elementor and we are not going to be using any other plugins. It's a really cool effect to do and I do love how it just blends in with all the other different colors that we have going on here. So let me show you how to do this yourself. Now remember, we are going to be using Elementor Pro or you can use the free alternative which is Pro Elements. If you don't have Pro Elements, there's going to be a link in the description where you can get that. Before we put in our first container to actually start this whole build, do make sure that you have the navigator structure menu on this side. If you don't have it, it's this button over here. If you click it, it'll pop up and just put it to the side. We're going to be referring to this a little bit and we are going to be renaming containers in there just to keep track of everything. So to start this off, we're going to add our first container. I'm going to put it into place. I'm going to make sure that it is full width. And I'm also going to make sure that in advanced, the padding is set to zero. Now before I add the next container, there's going to be a link in the description of this video that's going to take you to a reference page that's going to have everything you need there to help build this out. So if you click on that link, it's going to take you to this page on my website. As you scroll down, you'll see here's going to be a button for all the images I used in this tutorial. So you can follow along using the exact images. This next section over here is going to be all the CSS names that we're going to have to give to some of the containers. And then lastly is going to be the GSAP script that we're going to be using after we've built out everything inside the Elementor page builder. Okay, so now that I got that out of the way, let's go and add that next container. So the next container, we're going to click and drag it. We're going to make sure it's an inner container. Now this one is going to be in charge of the color. As we scroll, you're going to see that the color was actually changing. So if I show you over here, as we're scrolling along, this one's going to be in charge of that color and that whole animation like that. So we do have to start off with our first color for this. Now in the code over here, you can see that there's an array of colors that we're going to be using for this tutorial. So if you need a link to the exact first color, because we do need to start off with the first color, it's going to be inside the GSAP script over here in this reference page. And as you look into it, you can see this line of constant colors. And we're going to be selecting this one. We're just going to copy it over. And we're going to be using it as the background color of that container we just put in. So back over here in the editor, I'm going to make sure I'm on the second container. I'm going to go into the settings on the left-hand side here. The width, I'm going to keep at a 1200. And I am going to keep it as boxed. The direction, I want this to go from left to right. Then under style... I'm going to choose the background color. I'm going to select the color and I'm going to paste that color we just copied from the reference page. Just as a side note, all these colors you can change to whatever color you want. I'm only doing five different sections for this tutorial. You can have three sections if you want. You can have eight sections or 20 sections. Um, and I'll show you how to actually modify that in the code afterwards. But for this example, this is going to be our starting color. Now, the last thing that we have to do to this container is if we head over to advanced, we're going to have to give it a CSS class name. Now, this name is going to be my sections. Now, if you go look at that reference page and we go up to the CSS names, it's going to be this one over here of my section. I'm going to copy that over and I'm going to paste it right here. Okay, now that we've done that, now we're going to add two containers to this. We're going to have the left side and we're going to have the right side. Left side is going to house all our images, but we're not actually going to be using the image widgets on that. And on the right side is going to be all the text content. So I'm going to click on this plus sign. I'm going to add a container and then I'm just going to go and right click on it and say duplicate. So it's just stacked like that. You can just go and click the plus sign and add the container manually, but I just do duplicate. So the second container down, I'm going to double click on that and I'm just going to record it for myself as the background color. So I know that's the container that's housing everything that's in charge of the color. Once I've done that, I'm going to open it up and then these inner containers, I'm going to call left and right. Now that I have that out the way, I'm going to click on the left container to make sure that I have the settings for that. I'm going to keep most of the settings the same, except for the width. I'm going to say it's 50%. And I'm going to click on the right, and I'm going to say that's 50%. I'm just going to hard code this into it. It was doing it already, but let's just hard code it just to make sure that everything is fine for different types of browsers. Okay, so now we're going to be concentrating on the left-hand side. So in this left-hand container, we're going to add another container. But this one is going to be the image gallery. So all the images are going to be stacking into this one particularly. This one, we're going to make the view height set to VH and we're going to make it 100. The other thing we're going to be doing to this container is we're going to center justify. Then on the right hand side in the navigator, I'm just going to rename this to the image gallery. The last thing I need to do to this container before I continue is if I head over to advanced, I scroll down to motion effects 
I'm going to say this is going to be to the sticky top. Then once I've selected that, then I'm going to say stay in column. Okay, now it's time to add our images to this column. We're not going to be using the image widget. We are going to be using a container and we're going to be setting the background image of that container to the image that we want that whole effect to appear on. So we're going to click on the plus sign. We're going to click on the container. We're going to drag into the position and let go. Now this one, we're going to have the min height set to 660. Okay, we are going to center justify this one as well. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to select the image for the background. So we go to style. We go and click on classic and here we can go and select the image. Now remember, I gave you the images as references. Please do feel free to use those. So I'm going to click on the plus sign and I'm going to put in my image. I'm going to be using this first one. And I'm going to say select. Now you can see it in place. And we're just going to put in all the settings for that. So position, one center, center. Attachment is default. Repeat is none. And display size is cover. Now that we've done that, then we head over to the advanced tab. Now we're going to put in a CSS class for this. So we go back to reference page. We're going to copy this image effect one. We're going to copy that class name. Go back and we're going to paste that right over here. Now we scroll down. We are going to change a few things here. Now, another thing that we have to change over here for this container is for the position. We're going to set this to absolute. And we are going to go to the vertical orientation. Now, this is a weird thing that we have to do because we are adding extra code to Elemental. We are going to set this to a percentage sign. And then the actual number over here for this offset, we are just going to remove it. So it's going to be blank. It's a very important step. If you don't do it, then you're going to have issues. Okay, so now we're done with all the settings. I'm going to change the name of this container to image here in a navigator. You're going to see how useful this is going to be just a little bit later in this tutorial. Now that we've finished with everything that we need to do in settings of the left hand side, let's go and concentrate on the text content that's going to be on the right hand side. Okay, so now we're going to click on the right hand side container. And over here, we are going to go and add a container to it. So we're going to take a container widget. We're going to let go. Now this one I'm going to rename first before changing any of the settings. So I'm going to double click on that. I'm going to say text content. Now that I have that, let's go ahead and change some of these settings. So the view height, I'm going to change this to a VH of 100. And I'm also going to make sure that this is also center justified. The other thing that we need to do is we have to give it a class name. So we're going to go to advanced. And here for the class name, if we go to the reference page, we're going to click on the very next CSS name. We're going to copy that and we go back and we'll paste it into place. Now this container over here is going to house the actual widgets that we're going to be using. So for this example, I'm going to be using a heading widget. I'm going to be using the text paragraph widget and I'm going to use a button. So I'm just going to add them quickly. I'm going to add, I'm going to set the heading. I'm going to go click add. I'm going to go say text editor. And then I'm going to click add and I'm going to take a button. You can stylize these however you wish. For me, I'm just going to change them to white. So for the heading, I'm going to say go to style. I'm going to select white. For the text, go with style, select white. I'm not going to worry about fonts or anything else like that for here in this tutorial. Then the button, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to head over to style. I'm going to say the background is white and the text color is black. The last thing that I need to do, which is actually quite important, is we have to give a class name to the heading. So we're going to click on the heading. We're going to go to advanced. And then in that reference page, this last CSS name is the one we're going to take. We're going to copy it over. And we're going to paste it into the CSS classes. Now, this is the trigger for the code that's going to track exactly when to do the transition. Okay, so now we have all our containers and all the text and everything that we're going to be using for this effect. Now we're going to be concentrating on the image container again. There's just one more thing that we should do that I think is going to actually complement this whole look. So if we click on that image container and we go to the style section, I'm going to go to the border and I'm going to put this as a 45. And there is another setting that I'm going to do to this, but I'm only going to do it after we duplicate this container. Because these, this container has already all the settings we need for the effect, we're going to duplicate this image container. Now, because I have five different colors in my code, I'm going to duplicate this five times. So this image container, I'm just going to right click and say duplicate and do it again until I have five of them in a row. Now that I have all five of my containers, which are going to be the images, the last thing that I need to do to this first image container, just the first image container, is if I go into settings and style, I want to have a shadow. Now, you can't do this to all the image containers. 
it starts making a bit of a design issue, but it does work wonderfully if you only do it on the first image container. So if you go into the border and you add a shadow, you can add the shadow effect and it really does stand out on the colors. So for this first one, I'm just gonna say 10, vertical, I'm gonna say 20, and I'm gonna say the blur is 20. The amount of black that I want is only gonna be set at about a 30. Now remember, we're only doing this to the first image container. The things that we are gonna change on the others is we do have to change the background picture. So on the second image container, if we go to style, and we say change image, I'm going to select the second image that I'm going to be using. Now it's going to be this image over here with that green offset. I'm going to select that. Now you can see that nothing is changing over here in the front end. It's just because all these containers are stacking up on top of each other. And that's for the code. But if you need to change anything, this is where the navigator comes really useful. And you can see exactly what you're doing and editing with these renamed containers. So on the third container, I'm going to go over to style and I'm going to change this one as well. The fourth one, going to do the same thing, go to style, change it. I'm going to select this lady here. And the fifth and final one, go over to style, change it. And it's going to be this lady in this bluish background over here. So don't worry that in the builder, it looks a bit funny like this. This is part of the design. Now for the right hand side, it's very easy to do. We just have to select the text container and we're going to duplicate that with the heading, text widget, and button inside. So you can customize these all you like once you've already duplicated the container. Just bear in mind that the header is the trigger. So on the, for the right-hand side, I'm going to duplicate these five times. There we go. Now I have five of these containers. Each one is going to represent the corresponding image in the list. So we can modify these all we like. For example, I know on the last container, it's going to be this blue color. Now the blue with this sort of white is not going to stand out very well. So this last image container, I'm going to change the colors to these to offset this very light blue. So I'm going to click on the heading, go to style, and I'm going to select a much darker color for it. The text, I'm going to do the same thing. Go to style, text color, go darker. The button, I'm going to do the same as well. Click on the button, change the background, and change the text color. Okay, we are done with containers. Almost. No, we, we are. So now that we're done with these, if we scroll right down to the bottom, you're going to see we're going to have this white space over here. We are going to add the HTML widget. So we're going to click on this plus sign. We're going to look for the HTML. We're going to click and drag, and we're going to put that in the white space over here away from the other containers. Now in here, we're going to be using the code from that reference page. So if we head back, we go down to this last section here. This is the code that we are going to be using. Now in this code, I want you to pay special attention to these colors over here. They are the colors that are going to be in sequence to each background color of each image and text content. If you want to change the background color to the second image, you would change the second one in this sequence. If you only want to have four slides instead of five, you would take out this last color over here. Bear in mind to also remove the comma. Your code will crash if you don't take out that comma. Same thing applies adding colors. So after this color, if you want to add a six one, you put comma, then the hash code for the color. Do you remember that comma? Very important. The amount of times I have forgotten that comma is insane. So please remember the comma. There are other things you can do with this. You don't have to have just the fade. So if we scroll down just a little bit, underneath the colors, we're going to have this desktop animations this setting over here for your clip bar. If you start changing the inset, there will be a scrolly effect as well happening on the image as it overlays on the next one. It's a really interesting effect. I'm not really a fan of it for in production because it does look a bit budgety. You can play around with this effect as well. And that's going to be over here. Do play around from zeros to hundreds over here. If you do a hundred on the first one, this is going to be the top and you'll have a scrolling effect coming down the next one is going to be on the left third one's going to be from the bottom and then the fourth one's going to be on the right you can play around with that if you want the fading effect to be a little bit slower a little bit faster you can change with the auto alpha that's completely up to you and i'm not going to be really covering that in this tutorial i'm just showing you where you can do it so now that i have that out the way we're going to be sticking with everything we built in this tutorial so far so all we have to do is go over to the right hand side and we're just going to click copy and go back into the editor 
and in this HTML widget, we are going to paste. And that is it. We're done. We're really done. Now we're going to click publish. And if we preview this, there's our widget. There's everything we built with the corresponding background colors to those images that I was talking about. And if we scroll, you can see that whole effect going just like we planned. And this last one, because I changed the color, it offsets very nicely. There is a caveat to this effect, unfortunately. This doesn't work very well in mobile, but there is a way around it. Now, we can keep the background color effect just fine. This image, we can't. We have to do something different with the images strictly for mobile. And I'm gonna show you that now. So if we head back into the editor, if we look at the navigator on the right hand side, we're gonna click on the container that says left, which is gonna bring up the settings on the right. We're gonna to go to advanced. We're going to say responsive, and we're gonna say hide on mobile. Then inside each text container, we are going to add the correct image here above the heading. And that one, we're gonna change the response to just mobile. So in order to do that, we click on the plus sign. We click on image of the first one. I'm gonna put it above the heading. I'm gonna select the same image that we had for the first container, which is this one here. I'm gonna say select. For this, the style, I'm gonna do the same thing as I had done to these images over here. I'm gonna say that the border is 45. I'm gonna do the box shadow to represent the same thing, which was 10, 20, and 20. I'm gonna make sure that the shadow is set down to 0.3. And now I'm going to go to advanced. I'm going to scroll down to responsiveness and I'm going to hide on desktop and I'm going to hide on tablet. Now this image, I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to say duplicate. Now with the second image that I duplicated, I'm going to open up the text container underneath. I'm going to click and drag it into that container and I'm going to let go. This one, I'm going to change it to represent the second image I used, which was this one over here. And I'm going to do this across all the text containers. So I'm going to open up the next one, duplicate the second image, and I'm going to drag it into the third text content. Do the same thing, change the image to the third one, duplicate, open up the fourth, drag over, let go, make sure I'm on it, change it to the fifth image, duplicate it again. And on the final one, I'm going to select the final image. Once I have all that in place, now I can keep, hit publish. And now this thing is ready for both desktop and mobile. So if we go and review, you can see that it's still fine for all our needs the way that we had it just before. And if we go into mobile view, then you'll be able to see that the image is going to go with the text, but the background color is going to fade. You can't have dual columns in mobile. There's just not enough space. So this is the best way to have both situations covered as best as you can that doesn't look ugly in any shape or form. Hope you liked this video. If you did, please smash that like button. It makes a world of difference to my channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that button as well. The like and the sub really helps me navigate what future content that I can put out for you guys. If you have any suggestions or anything, put a comment down below and let me see what I can do. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.